today I'm going to talk about APIs and YouTube API in specific and how to use it. API stands for Application Programming Interface which is nothing but just an endpoint available for us to use it to perform different functions supported by that application obviously but without using the application interface. This may sound complicated and boring like a school lecture. So I won't bore you more and explain it with the YouTube API. So first of all let's see YouTube as an application. So I won't bore you more. What does YouTube allow us to do? It allows us to upload a video, update its title, update its description, check view count, number of likes, dislikes, comments, etc. But first of all, how does it authenticate us? Well, the simple answer is it authenticates us by logging us in. You know, you cannot upload a video, leave alone edit or update it without first logging in into YouTube. So that's how it authenticates us. After we are being authenticated, we can upload a video. And when we visit a video, it again checks if the video belongs to us. If it does, then we can edit the video. So that's what happens as we see it from the UI, that is the front end. But what if I tell you we can do all these things without visiting the YouTube front end without logging in directly via code so as to automate the process for some reasons. For example, consider this video itself. The title of this video is dynamic. It shows the view count of the video and it is updated every hour. So do not try to refresh the video again and again to see the updated title. It is refreshed only once in an hour. Nope. No. You suck. It is refreshed only once in an hour. You may ask why every hour? Why not every minute or every second? Well, it's because I chose every hour. <laughs> so that I don't exhaust the API hit limits allotted to my account which is 10,000 units per day which looks like a very huge number but it is units per day and not hits per day. YouTube allots some units to each of its operations performed by its API. For example, read operation uses one unit, write operation uses 50 unit and an upload operation uses 1600 units. So the 10,000 units allotted to my account should be less than the sum of all the units of all the operations performed by us via the YouTube API in a single day. Well, this got more complicated in no time. Let's back up a few steps and get back to the YouTube API basics. So I was telling you how all the frontend things can be performed via the code with the help of YouTube APIs. Just like the frontend, YouTube API needs us to be authenticated in order to perform the tasks but we are not required to log in. Instead, we need to provide an authentication key or file which will contain data that can prove our identity. And this key or file needs to be passed in the code in order to authenticate us. So let's see how you can implement this dynamic video title all by yourself. First of all, we need to log in to console.cloud.google.com. I've already logged in. If this is the first time you are logging into Google Cloud Console, then you may or may not require to set up your account, payment options and things like that. There are a number of tutorial videos for that. You can follow that and log into your Google Cloud Console and it should look something like my screen. Then you need to create a project with the help of which we will hit the YouTube APIs. Give some name to your project and create it. After the project is created, it will open the project automatically. 
if you are not already inside another project or you can go to your project by clicking the notification from right here. So this is the dashboard of your project. It gives us basic details of the API heads, the resources it is using, billing details, error reporting, etc. Now we need to go to APIs and services and click enable APIs and services. So this is the whole bunch of APIs provided by Google Cloud. Now we need to search for the API which we are going to use. That is the YouTube API. So these are the four APIs provided by YouTube and we are going to use the YouTube data API. Let's enable this YouTube API. So now we have enabled the YouTube data API for our project. Great. As you can see, the message tells us in order to use this API, we need credentials which will authenticate us. So let's go on and create credentials. Here we select the YouTube data API which we are going to use and here we are going to select other UI and in what type of data we will be accessing we will select user data because we will be going to change the title of the video which is user specific data then click on what credentials do I need it then tells us to set up the OAuth consent screen so let's set it up in user type select external and click create give any name to the application other details are optional click on save once the OAuth consent screen has been created go back to credentials and click create credentials select OAuth client ID we can also generate API key but API key is used for read operations since we are going to use a write operation that is updating the title of the video we will select OAuth client ID in application type select TVs and limited input devices and click create close this dialog box as we are not going to use this detail we just need to download this credential in the form of a JSON file and save it somewhere I have already downloaded it and saved it so I'm gonna cancel it. Let's open up our terminal now. I'm running the code in my Raspberry Pi running Raspbian. You can also follow this for Linux and modify it a bit to make it work for Windows. Also we need Python 3 for it. So if you don't have Python 3, install it. Again, there are many instructions available for it. Find one and follow it. Let's go to our directory where we have kept the credentials JSON file. Keep the code and the credentials file in the same directory. You can download the code from the link in the descriptions below. I'm not gonna explain the code. You just need to replace this with the ID of the YouTube video for which you need to update the title and this with the name of your credentials JSON file. You can also modify the title by modifying this part and then just save the code. Now let us try to run the code with Python 3. It will ask you to go to the URL and generate the authentication token. If it shows that you need some modules in order to run this code, you need to install PIP3 and then install the shown modules with the help of PIP3. You have to go to this URL and exit the code for now. Now you need to sign in with your Google account. Select your channel to which that video belongs. Go to advanced and proceed with the API. Allow the permissions and you will get the authentication token. Copy it, then run this code. Replace this part with your authentication token and hit enter. After you have run the code, you can get back to your video and check if its title is updated. 
as i was appending the time to the title of the video we can see that it is updated on 9th may 2020 at 1 56 pm and right now it is 9th may 2020 1 56 pm so our code ran perfectly you can also change this to update the frequency of the code it is set to 3600 seconds which is equal to one hour that is why my code runs once every hour you can change it to 30 minutes or anything to your liking but just remember to stay within the limits of the quota allotted to your account so that's it for this tutorial thanks for watching like share and subscribe to my channel if you found this video helpful